Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. So if you would now, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you shower upon us each day. We praise your name, Lord, for your mercy and your grace, and just thank you for being with us and ministering to us and taking care of us. Now, Father, as we prepare to delve into your word this morning, we prepare our hearts to receive a blessing from you. Speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you would, open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2, and we will begin with verses 12 through 14. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 12. I'll write to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I'll write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. And I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you have known the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. And I write to you, young men, because you are strong in the word of, the, of God. Because you are strong and the word of God lives in you. And you have overcome the evil one. Now, I use the international, new international version of, of the Bible, and it's what I have read from, and it would appear that verse 12 and 13 are repeated again in verse 14. However, that may not be the case uh, in your translation. I have read several other translations, and they all read slightly different. In other translations, John begins by saying, I am writing to you, dear children. I am writing to you, fathers, and I am writing to you, young men. Then in verse 13b, he says, I write to you, dear children. Verse 14, I write to you, fathers, and I write to you, young men. The rest of the verses are the same in those translations as it is in the one that I just read. And according to the commentaries, that this was a common practice for Greek writing to say something and then repeat it again in a way that uh, would just emphasize the importance of what is being read. So to say, I am writing, that is, indeed, he is writing to the church. And then, as I said, it just to repeat it, he is em emphasizing the importance of what he's saying and wants, wants them to understand and wants to get their attention. For children, that is, I believe, those who have been recently converted, that recently accepted Christ, I think that John is reminding those who read the letter and those who hear it read of what Christ, of what Christ did for them. With his death on, the, death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave, the price was paid for their sins, and they are pardoned through his name on account of confessing his name, that is, by accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And the same is true for us today. To the fathers, then, that would be, I believe, those who are more mature in their faith, that not only have they accepted Christ, but they have also grown in their understanding of what Christ did for them and are allowing the Holy Spirit to work through them. To the young men, I believe that this could be those who are just beginning to live by faith and growing deeper into their understanding of what it means to be victorious over the evil one and that the Word of God is always abiding in their hearts and that they are practicing this and doing that and, and expressing their love for God in that way. Then John uh, repeats this as a way of emphasizing the importance of remembering 
who they are and whose they are and what Christ has done for them. Through Christ, we have the gift of forgiveness and we are able to grow in our knowledge of him. And we accomplish this by reading his word and meditating and studying and uh, allowing his, studying his word and spending time with God and allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to us and to teach us. To be the source of our strength and power by doing this, we are able to be victorious over the evil one. Now let us read verses 15 through 17. He says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world is cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes and the boasting of of what he has done and what he does comes out from from does not come comes not from the father but from the world the world and its desire passes away but the man who does the will of god lives forever perhaps as john wrote these words he may have been recalling the conversation that jesus had with his disciples shortly before his crucifixion and this can be found in John, the 15th chapter, verses 18 and 19, where he told the disciples, If the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. And then also in the 17th chapter of John, verses 13 through 19, as Jesus was praying for his disciples and those who would become followers of Jesus because of their ministry, these verses Jesus says, I am coming to you now, but us, and that he's referring there to, because he's praying to God and referring there to, to God said, I am coming to you now, or coming to God now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy with, within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of this world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you will take them out of the world, but that you will protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This prayer was also said for you and I, because we are followers of Christ but as a result of their ministry. And I think John may be reminding the church that even though we live in the world, that we are not to conform to the standards of this world. We are not, not to allow the wants and the desires of, to be for worldly pleasures, whatever that might be. And John says that this world and all that is in it will pass away because we are not of the world and our desires must be to please God to be involved in his ministry, and by doing so, we will live forever. Barclay's commentary has this to say, the Christian cannot escape the obligation to be different from the world. In these verses, John sees things as black or white. There is no neutrality. A man either loves the world or he loves God. And if you'll recall, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, that no man can serve two masters. The choice remains the same. Either we accept the world's standards or we accept God's standards. Which will it be? Well, I have enjoyed sharing with you this morning. And if you have any comments or different ideas on these verses, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that I may be able to address them for you. I would love to hear from you. So have a wonderful time with the Lord, and may the Lord continue to richly bless you. Go in peace and in the love of God.